Amen. Amen. It's good to see everybody this evening. What a wonderful day. Wasn't it great out there? Yeah. It's great. Amen. And everybody, hopefully, safely, no deer, no, no deer on the, on the way here. Ah, oh, stink. I was, I, and I'm not saying stink because it didn't hit you. I'm stink because you showed up, period. It's like, stop showing up. It was a brass deer, like it was like stationary. <laughs> oh my goodness, mercy, mercy. Well, amen. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Every we made it here safely, and uh, other than uh, scrape, we're, we're doing pretty good. Amen. Amen. Well, let's all stand, please, and let's uh, start uh, by uh, singing number 215, Heaven Came Down and Glory Filled My Soul. We'll sing all three verses of number 215. Number 215, Heaven Came Down and Glory Filled My Soul. Let's sing it out. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I would wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend, he met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling, with joy I am telling, he made all the darkness far. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down, and glory filled my soul. Born of the Spirit, with life from above, into God's family divine. Justified fully through Calvary's love, oh, what a standing is mine. And the transaction so quickly was made When as a sinner I came Took of the offer of grace he did proffer He saved me, oh praise his dear name Heaven came down and glory filled my soul When at the cross the Savior made me whole My sins were washed soul on the last now i've a hope that will surely endure after the passing of time i have a future in heaven for sure there in those mansions of lime and it's because of that wonderful name when at the cross i believe Riches eternal and blessings supernal from his precious hand I receive. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Sing it out. When at the cross the Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Amen, amen. You remember that day when heaven came down and glory filled your soul? You remember when you, when you got saved? Amen. What a wonderful day that was. What a wonderful day that was. Amen. We'll be in prayer for Brother Luke. Uh, he, he told me uh, he has injured his, his back and uh, he's uh, not feeling well. That's not, not a fun injury to have. So let's be in prayer for him, and uh, we, we hope that he is quickly back on his feet and able to uh, uh, resume his, uh, his uh, areas of service. We, we miss him. And so if uh, I, I assume he's watching, but Luke, we miss you, and uh, we are praying that, that you'll be uh, recuperated very soon. So 
Amen. Let's open up with a word of prayer and ask the Lord to, to be with us this evening. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for a chance, Lord, to come to church. And I ask you, Lord, to please, Lord, bless our time together as a church family. Thank you so much for watching over our, our, our church family members. And I ask you, Lord, to please bless them for putting you first, for for taking time out of their schedule to, to come to church and to be faithful. Lord, thank you for their faithfulness and bless them for their faithfulness. I pray, Lord, that you please bless our service, bless each song sung and each, uh, each word said and the, and the message that we're going to hear in the, the study from the Bible. I pray, Lord, that you please help us, Lord, to, to grow and to, to be more effective uh, in our Christian walk, Lord. Please bless our time together. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, don't forget uh, that in just after this song, we'll be having our prayer time. So be thinking of some prayer requests and also um, um, Brother uh, Gear, uh, we're, uh, I need some offering plates. One up here and we'll have one out in the for your, uh, for your offering if you happen to have that for this evening. Amen. All right, let's go to our song book, number 257, number 257, 257. Before we start, do, does anybody have a blessing they want to share with us? blessing yes sir <laughs> amen at a at a regular barber regular bar whoa yeah amen you got a blessing thank you mm-hmm Amen. Good. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. It's amazing what, what the, words of, of, the words of God will bring peace to a, a person's heart. And just sharing it with them, the, the word of God won't come back void. So just uh, praise the Lord for that. That's good. That's good. All right, let's grab our song verse number 257, Look and Live. I have a message from the Lord, hallelujah. The message unto you I give, number 257. I have a message from the Lord, hallelujah. Unto you, I'll give. Tis recorded in His Word, Hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Look and live, my brother, live. Look to Jesus now and live. Tis recorded in His Word, Hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Life is offered unto you, hallelujah, eternal life the soul shall have. If you'll only look to him, hallelujah, look to Jesus who alone can save. Look and live, my brother, live, look to Jesus now and live. Tis recorded in his word, hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. I will tell you how I came, hallelujah, to Jesus when he made me whole. Twas believing in his name, hallelujah, I trusted and he saved my soul. Look and live, my brother, live. Look to Jesus now and live. Tis recorded in his word, hallelujah, it is only that you look and live. Amen, amen. I'm so glad salvation is so simple. I'm such a, I'm such a thick-headed person. I need it really simple, amen? <laughs> amen. All right, let's go to the announcements right quick. Don't forget that this Sunday we're going to be honoring our fathers. Father's Day will be this Sunday. 
And uh, if you have any friends that are fathers, invite them to come. We got a special gift for all the fathers that come this Sunday. We would like to have a special day with them and uh, honor them. Amen. So then on Friday, Friday the June 26th, from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the Ramsey's house, we're having an uh, the, the Ramseys are having an open house for his graduation, and uh, they are inviting the church to come and enjoy uh, some, some of the evening with them. So be, uh, keep, put that on your calendar. It's going to be a fun time, fun time. And then um, on the 28th, the May, uh, June 28th, we will be honoring our high school graduates, uh, Bradley and Dalton, who are graduating, who graduated this year. And uh, we will be uh, doing something in the morning service and then uh, having an afterglow after the evening service and uh, cake and ice cream. So um, uh, come and enjoy the time with them and, and congratulate them. Also, that evening we'll have missionary Peter Sherrard. He's going to Panama. He'll be with us for that evening service on Sunday, June 28th. And then on July 5th, we'll be having I Love America Sunday. I want everybody to come dressed in red, white, and blue. Amen? Red, white, and blue. Let's do it. Amen. Let's just uh, have a fun day that day, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna enjoy the uh, the time together. Amen. All right. Let's go to the the, uh, the our prayer time right now. Uh, one last announcement. Um, this Sunday night after the evening service, if I can meet with all of our Sunday school teachers, uh, I know I had mentioned something to you about three four months ago before we all before y'all all stayed home for the last couple mu- couple months. And I've just been praying that y'all would come to church. Again, just kidding. No, but um, we had talked about having a meeting, and, uh, and I want to um, be able to fulfill that. And so if we could meet uh, after the evening service on Sunday night, uh, and we could we can meet downstairs in the, fellowship, in, the, um, in the fellowship hall downstairs. So if you would just uh, keep that in mind. All right? So if you would, put these prayer requests on your list to pray for. Pray for Miss uh, Annie Waddell. It's Deanna Shepherd's mom. And uh, as far as we know, she's still in delicate condition. So keep her in your prayers. Um, uh, also, uh, Sandy's sister, Debbie Miller. Uh, pray about her upcoming CT scans, and uh, Miss Bunny says that one of the rods is in her back is moving out of place, and several masses have been found on her kidney, so keep her in your prayers. Debbie Miller is her name, and um, an update on uh, Ken Merklinger's grandson, TJ. He came through his emergency appendectomy, excuse me, fine, so praise the Lord for that, amen, and if you would just continue to be in prayer for my Uncle Jesse. Uh, I have not heard anything else from my aunt, so uh, Uncle Jesse Daniel, um, he is in Kansas City, Missouri, and uh, just being prayer for prayer for him. They called in hospice about a week ago, and uh, so um, that's kind of where he is right now. All right, uh, be sure to add Brother Luke. Uh, be sure to add Brother Luke, and let's pray for him. Yeah, he injured his back, so pray for a quick recovery and a full recovery, so he can uh, be able to get back to his routine. Amen? All right. Anybody else? Dalton? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So Annie Waddell uh, is home from the hospital and making good progress. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. All right. You had another one? Brother Berkey Powell is going for a COVID test and a, say the last part again, a kidney, kidney operation. Okay. All right. And Brother Tony, you had your hand raised? Daughter Ashley. Anybody else? A prayer request. Okay. All right. 
believe we're I believe we're good. All right, so let's take a few minutes, and um, we've got uh, Miss Annie Waddell. We have a uh, praise for her. Uh, we have Miss Debbie Miller. We have uh, Ken Merklinger's grandson T.J., uh, my uncle Jesse, uh, Brother Luke, Brother Burkepile, Miss Rhea, her daughter Ashley um, has a has a um, tell me again. It's a uh, something for cancer. Okay, so a test, and then George, uh, this uh, young Christian who just got saved uh, yesterday for his Christian growth. All right, anybody else? Anybody else? All right, let's take a, a few minutes, and right where we are, we have Miss Melissa play the piano, and uh, let's pray over these requests and take them to, to the Lord's throne, to God's throne, and uh, we'll, I'll be back to uh, close this out in just a little bit. Miss Melissa.
Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for this chance to come before you and, and talk to you and carry our burdens to you and just be able to enjoy a, a little bit of time with you. And Lord, I know that we're sinners and just to, just to look at us is, is an embarrassment for you, is a shame to you, but Lord, you enjoy it because we're your creation and we're your children and, and you love us and we thank you for that. And I ask you, Lord, to please take these requests, lift them up. I pray that you'd please, may your will be done in each of these lives. I pray, Lord, that you please get honor and glory through whatever you do, Lord. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go to number 187. 187, this is the greatest song in all of Christendom. 187, the greatest truth in all of Christianity. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible, think about the words. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. Heaven's gate to open wide. He will wash away my sin. Let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. He will stay close beside me all the way. Thou hast bled and died for me. I will henceforth live for thee. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Amen, amen. Brother Tompkins, do you have a missionary letter for tonight? No? Okay. Okay. All right, so let's go to our Bible study. Sorry about that. All right, let's go to our Bible study this evening. Go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, and we'll get ourselves on track uh, one way or the other before the Lord comes back. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. We started uh, last week a series on prayer, and this week we're going to uh, talk about understanding what effective prayer is. Understanding what effective prayer is prayer is. Ephesians chapter 6, and we'll read verses 10 through verse 20. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through verse 20. I will try to pay more attention to your blanks this evening. Last week I was getting back into the habit of having people and having Bible studies and people uh, writing stuff down, and I, I probably, you probably missed some of your blanks. I don't know about you, but it annoys me to death. Mike got a blank there. I feel like the college, uh, the college secretary staff is going to give me demerits because I had a blank on my paper. You know, our, our activity report, we had to have every blank filled out with a slash mark, with a zero, with something. It could be no blank, so I don't know. I just, I'm going to get over it, right? Amen. All right, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, it says, Finally, breth my brethren, be strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that, we, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, 
and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I praise and thank you, Lord, for a chance to teach from your word. Lord, I ask that you, Lord, please challenge our hearts. Lord, challenge our hearts. Lord, help us to be good soldiers. Lord, help us to please you. Lord, in, in one area where we can, we can exercise omnipotence is in this area of prayer because we can we can implore your interaction we can implore and get you to move and it's not our own strength it's us getting you to move and lord I ask that you please help us lord to, to see how we can get your hand to move and see how we can get answers to prayer and how we can have a, a position of power in your eyes and be able to to have an effective relationship in this matter of prayer and, and understand what that is and how important that is especially in the in the in the day and age that we live in i pray lord you please meet with us this evening teach us something from your word lord i pray this all in jesus name amen amen so in review uh last week we talked about uh, we we did it. I did an introduction uh, lesson into this this Bible study series on prayer, and I'm said that one thing that the disciples asked the Lord Jesus to teach them was to what pray. He said teach us. They said teach us to pray. Uh, they didn't ask the, the the Lord to teach him to preach. They didn't ask the Lord to to teach him how to how to uh, win souls or, or anything like. That. Those are all great things. But, but the one thing that they saw that he was powerful in, that he was strong in, and they wanted to copy, and that was how he talked to the Lord, how he addressed the Lord, and, and the power with which he spoke to the Lord. And, and so the one thing the disciples asked the Lord Jesus to teach them was to pray. Dr. John Rice, he said that prayer is what? Asking and receiving Many of us think that, oh, I, I, I prayed because I asked the Lord for all these things. No, prayer is asking and receiving. You only did half prayer. And so, so you should be challenged and say, you know what? I, I want to pray in a way where I'm going to get things from the Lord. And I'm not talking about when I say get things, I'm not talking about possessions or riches or anything like that. No, I'm just going to get God to move. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray in such a way where we see victories happening in people's lives, where we see things going on and, and, and you know, people being healed and lives being changed and, and, and bigger things than just, just for me. So prayer is asking and receiving. Is, is you having such an audience with the king of kings that he listens to what you have to say, he, he takes notes, and he moves. Wow. That's, that, that's a powerful position. To be able to go to the king of... Th think, about, think about if you had an audience with President Trump and you sat down with him and said, you know, we've got this, this problem going on here and here and here, just like in your, in your plan. You know, President Trump comes, comes to his plan, and, 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 and you sit down with him, and you tell him, and then he says, you know what, let's, let's, let's change this, 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 boom, 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 and it happens. Whew. But this is the king of kings we're talking about. This is the one who reigns above all the, the rulers of the world, and that's what prayer is. See, that's the position of power that God wants us to understand that we hold at any... A 13-year-old, a 10-year-old, an 8-year-old, a, 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 you know, a 20-year-old, you know, I've only been saved for, you know, for a year or I've been saved for a, for a day. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because you're in Jesus Christ. You're in Jesus Christ and you have a position of authority. And once you realize that, that underneath your lapel or pinned to your, to, your, to your shirt right there is a deputy badge and you have that authority in Jesus Christ. 
and you can go to the Father, and you can talk to him, and you can ask things according to his will, and you can get his hands to move. Amen. So prayer is asking and receiving. And so we talked about, we went through Luke chapter, two, Luke chapter 11, verses 2 through 4, which, which uh, is the model prayer. And, and, and Jesus talked to the, to the disciples and gave them an example prayer. And uh, like, like I, I mentioned, you, you may, there may be a recipe that we use. Um, uh, somebody was mentioning a, another recipe this week, and it was, it was pretty much you could interchange the, the ingredients and vary it uh, to your own taste. And that's, that's, that's what the model prayer is, is he gave you a basic outline, but then you can, you can change the, interchange the pieces and vary it as the need arises. So number one, he says, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Take time to praise and thank God for what he has done. God, God wants us to praise him for what he has done. Uh, don't, don't be a, a, a forgetful hearer. Don't be a, a, an unthankful person where God is good and he's good and he's good and he's good and he's good and you never even remind him of how good he is. You, I mean, do you like that? Do you, do you like it? Being good to somebody and good to somebody and good to somebody and, and they just, they don't even, they, they just take it and don't even say anything. They don't even acknowledge you. It, it kind of just defeats the some of the motivation for, for wanting to give, and, and our, our Heavenly Father is very giving. And, he, and Jesus is teaching us that we should take time to, to thank Him for what He's done. Also, take time to praise God for His attributes. Praise and thank God for His attributes. Uh, think about His attributes. Last week, I, I left on the, uh, the security stand out here in the, in the foyer a, uh, an, a, an example prayer list. It's a blank prayer list. Um, it's a way to organize your prayer list. I encourage, if, if you don't have a, a, a good, solid prayer list and, and, and this is an area where you struggle, I encourage you, grab one of those. Use it, as, use it as an outline. Use it as a structure until you can get your own habit, until you can get strong in this area. But it, and, and on that sheet, it has a place. It has ideas and suggestions and, and kind of thought provokers to get your, to get your mind going and uh, to, to help you in these areas. Also, uh, we, we talked about in, a, in a verse 2, he says, Thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. And we talked about how we should let God know that our will is surrendered. That our will is surrendered. He said, he, he said pray, thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. That should be our, our heart's desire. We may have our heart set on something, but it may not be the will of God. That, that, that brand new car that we've always dreamed of, or that house, or that, that girl that, that you wanted to marry back in the day, uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> the Lord worked it out and, and got, gave you his will, amen? And, and, and those are things that, that we need to pray, Lord, whatever I ask, my heart's desire is for what you want to be done, not what I want to be done. So if I'm wrong in asking for this, please fix my prayer, <laughs> And give me what you know is best for me. Amen. So then we said in uh, uh, verse 3, he says, Give us day by day our daily bread. We talked about how that we, he, he, Jesus wants us to ask God for, for your needs daily. For your needs daily. And, uh, and, and we talked about day, the daily manna that was given to the people of Israel back in, in, the, in the wilderness. And how that he wants us to have a dependency on him. We also talked about he, he said, forgive us our sins as we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. I, I said last week, confession of sins is very powerful in God's eyes. Confession of sins is very powerful in God's eyes. Because what you're doing is you are talking badly about yourself. Na the natural carnal man wants to think highly of himself and wants to protect this so-called image that it has. But a truly spiritual man, a truly uh, a, a strong man in the, in the spiritual sense of the word can go to God and talk about his own self-image or his own idea of himself to God in a way that's critical. He can, he can, he can open up and he can tell him, hey, this, this, this guy, the, 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 this body I live in, this, this guy that I live with, uh, uh, you know, he, he did this wrong, and he did this wrong, and he did this wrong, and he did this wrong. And I'm not talking about somebody outside of your body. I'm talking about the person that, that, that like, you. And you're talking to God about the person that you live with, and you're just, you're just telling them what for. And, and that, that to God says, hey, you know, 
I appreciate being honest. You do realize that if Jesus is in your heart and you did something wrong, that he witnessed you do it. And when you can't talk to him about it because you're trying to hide it, God, no, it's, it's, it's like, it's like a, a, our, our, our children, we, they, uh, we tell them, don't, don't get in the cookie jar. Don't get in the cookie jar. And they reach up there, and then all of a sudden we come around the corner, and they're, they got crumbs on their face and crumbs down here, and, they, and they've got something behind their back. They swing their arm behind their back, and, and we're like, what's behind your back? Nothing, nothing. That's what, that's, that's what like, we send, and it's like, oh, I didn't, think, I didn't do anything wrong, God. No, 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 we're trying to hide it. And God sees right through us. And he can see it in our hands. And so the, he, he says, confession of sins is very powerful. Be very honest. He also says, lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We need to ask the Lord for daily guidance from him. Ask the Lord for daily guidance from him. The Lord appreciates our honesty with him about our troublesome areas. And I also said, God doesn't expect you to be perfect, just perfectly honest. Just, just perfectly honest. All right, so write this quote down. Write this quote down. This is a very good quote I, I, I came across. If prayer is meager, if prayer is meager, M-E-A-G-R-E, if prayer is meager, it is because we consider it, if prayer is meager, it is because we consider it supplemental supplemental if prayer is meager it is because we consider it supplemental not fundamental if prayer is meager we it is because we consider it supplemental not fundamental not fundamental if prayer is meager it is because we consider it supplemental not fundamental well, that right there is a power, powerful statement that right there pretty much sums up why, why we struggle at this area of our Christian life, doesn't it? Amen. It's because we, we, we think that we can live without it, but we can't. We cannot. And it's something that we have got to discipline. Last week I said prayer is a discipline. It's something that we've got to discipline ourselves to do and make ourselves do. So, we started this evening in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. And we talked about, and this passage of Scripture talks about the, 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 uh, the weapons of our, or the, the armor of God, the armor of God. But in verse 12 is where I wanted to, to concentrate on. Concentrate on verse 12. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. These terms are hierarchy terms in the spirit realm. There are, there's the, the level of principalities. There's the level of powers. There's the rulers of the darkness of this world. There's spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's who we are fighting against. We're not fighting against somebody with a, with, with a, body, with a body or with, with flesh and blood. No, we're, we're all, all these, these evil things that are going on is, is influences from satanic powers in this world. When we pray, we're fighting against it. We're wrestling with it. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? That when you bow your head to pray, when you go to the Lord in prayer, you may, you may not think yourself as a great Christian. You may not think yourself as this, this, this sumo wrestler of a, of, a, of, a, of a Christian or this strong hulk of a person spiritually, but Satan is scared when any one of you, it doesn't matter if you're a child, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're a, a grandparent, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter your age spiritually. When you get on your knees and you start talking and go into the throne room of heaven, Satan trembles. Right. Satan trembles. Number one, effective prayer is wrestling. Effective prayer is wrestling. It's a fight. It's, it's you having to, to, to dominate your opponent. And that's what effective prayer is. Number two, prayer is the act of doing battle in the spirit realm. Prayer is the act of doing battle in the spirit realm. Satan fears 
praying Christians. Satan fears Christians who are, are dedicated. I guarantee you, if you, if you say, I am going to start praying at uh, such and such a time every day, I guarantee you, you may get through a day or two, but before long, distractions are going to hit you at that exact point in time. Right. Amen. Amen. Why is that? Your enemy. Yeah. Your enemy. He knows. He's scared of that. And he's going he's gonna to start saying, hey, you know, distract him, uh, uh, phone calls, or, or pepper him with thoughts of, of, of things he's got to do. You know, that's why it's good for you to have a pen and paper beside, beside if you're having your devotion in the morning and your prayer time, have a pen and paper. And, and if Satan says, hey, don't forget, hey, did, hey, don't forget about this. Hey, don't forget. Thank you. I'll write that right now. I appreciate it. You go to back to prayer. and Oh, pr- 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 let's throw a few more thoughts in his head. And oh, what about this? Oh, thank you. Let me write down. Let me write. Okay, back to prayer. Back to prayer. Thank you. I appreciate it. Frustrate him. <laughs> Frustrate him. But prayer is the act of doing battle in the spirit realm. Number three, prayer is climbing up onto the battlefield. Prayer is climbing up onto the battlefield to do battle in the spiritual realm. It's, it's climbing out, out of the pit of, pit of the earth and climbing up into the spirit realm and climbing on the battlefield and doing battle. You going to God and you getting Him to move, to, to, to move the heavens. This is what effective prayer is. And we need to understand how powerful it is. And that any one of us, God wants us to do this kind of work. He wants us to do this kind of work. He doesn't want us to, to, to qualify ourselves or say, well, you know, I'm not, I'm, not this, I'm not this or that, or I'm not qualified, or I'm not strong enough. No. He wants us to do it because the more Christians that do this, the more his power is felt here in this earth. Number four, number four. Prayer's enemies are the world. Prayer's enemies are the world. This world wants to inundate you with so many things to distract you. And it may not be bad things. G. Campbell Morgan said that the devil is an expert at giving you a thousand good things that you can be involved with just so you'll sacrifice better things or the best thing. Satan's a, Satan's a perfect per, uh, person to, 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 to remind you and, and to, to, to put a thousand good things in your life so you'll not do the best thing, and that is pray. So prayer's enemies are the world, and the world has so many distractions, so many things that, that, that Satan wants to use for us to be distracted, for us to not to be disciplined, for us to, to be busy with. And it's an enemy of prayer. Number two, prayer's enemies are the world and then the flesh. The flesh. The flesh. Satan knows that our flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is what? Weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he knows our flesh is weak. And he wants us to be lazy. And he wants us to not want to work. And he wants to discourage our spirit and not... not, not uh, 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 work at this exercise, this discipline of praying. Prayer's enemies are the world. Prayer's enemies are the flesh. Prayer's enemies are the devil. The devil. Satan, he trembles. He trembles at praying Christians. He trembles. I heard a, a re- report about, uh, uh, about uh, last full moon or something. There was this, this uh, satanic meeting going on and they were praying curses upon our president and 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 somebody said in this article the one thing that these these people these evil people hate are praying christians so christians we need to pray that night we need to pray for our president we need to pray for and they were listening that, and because they tremble satan trembles right. he know he, he knows that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world Amen. and we've got to claim that we've got to believe that don't be lulled to sleep. Don't be, don't, don't be uh, uh, rocked to sleep by his, his lullabies. Be disciplined. Let's go to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. You see, the, the, the enemies of prayer are the world, the flesh, and the devil. Paul understood 
this plight. He understood and he, 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 he wrote about his struggles. Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. So, so when, you, when you hear this, understand this is the great missionary Paul who is describing his struggles. So, so don't listen to Satan's lies. Yes, you may have sinned, but the God, God says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So go to God and whatever he's brought to your mind that is convicting your heart, talk to him about it and trust and embrace his forgiveness and then understand that, that the men in the Bible, the women in the Bible were men and women of like passions as we are. Let's, let's look at what Paul said about his spiritual life, okay? This is the great missionary Paul, Romans chapter 7, verse 14. He says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. For what I, but what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will or the desire is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not, it is no more. I, I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into, the, into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? You see the plight that Paul is describing here? He, he was describing this, the inner struggle that he was dealing with. And this is, this is when he's writing Romans. This is, this is after being in the, in the ministry for 25, 30 years. I, 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 to put it in perspective, Pastor Toller, has, has, you've been here in this area 25 years? That's, that's what Paul's saying. I've, I've been in the ministry 25, 30 years, but this is, this is the struggle I find inside. So don't let it discourage you when you are experiencing the same thing. The, the, the enemies to prayer are the world, the flesh, and the devil, and Satan is going to try to, to do what he can to discourage you from climbing up on that battlefield and doing battle and doing war in the spirit realm. There's a verse in the Old Testament that says when the man of sin, when, when Satan at the end of time is revealed, that all the nations and all the people will say, is this the one that brought down kingdoms? Is this the one that, that, that destroyed the... What? That's, it makes me wonder how big is Satan? Is he a mosquito fly? I think he's bigger, but it just makes me wonder. And, and he has all this power. In Jesus Christ, we have more power than him. And when we go to prayer, when we go to prayer, I'm not saying that we discount him or that we, that we blow him off or he's just a bug. We can just squash him on the windshield. No, no, we got to take him seriously because he does have more power than us at this point. But in Jesus Christ, greater power is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And when we go to God in prayer, we can take hold of that power. And Paul said here, I want to do these good things, but the things that I don't want to do, I end up doing. I, I, the, the things I don't want to do, I end up doing, and I forget the things that I should do. And so he was describing this, this struggle, this struggle. Remember what we said, if prayer is meager, it is because we consider it supplemental, not fundamental. Number five, effective prayer takes perseverance. Effective ta prayer takes perseverance. Here's an example of effective praying. Genesis 32, 17 through 29. Jacob is coming home after being at Laban's for 20 years. And he says, 
And he commanded the foremost, saying, When Esau, my brother, meeteth thee, and asketh thee, saying, Whose art thou, and whither goest thou, and whose are these before thee? Then thou shalt say, They be thy servant Jacob's. It is a present sent unto my lord Esau, and behold, also he is behind us. And so commanded he the second and the third, and all that followed the droves, saying, On this manner shall you speak unto Esau when you find him. And say ye, moreover, behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goeth before me, and afterward I will see his face. Peradventure, he will accept me. Why in the world is Jacob so scared? Well, if you remember in the story, Jacob had, had stolen Esau's birthright and then stolen the blessing. And the last thing Jacob heard Esau say was, when daddy dies, I'm killing him. And Jacob runs away and stays away for 20 years. And now he's coming back, and that's haunting him. That's haunting him. That's haunting him. I'm going to my death. And so he prepares these droves as a peace offering. He wanted to give them to Esau and say, listen, God has blessed me so much. Here, take it. I'll, I'll, I'll live in poverty, just don't kill me. Keep reading. It says, in verse 21, it says, So when the present, when, when the present, so the, went the present over before him, and himself lodged that night in the company. And he arose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow... And Jacob's thigh was out of joint, and he wrestled with him, and he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob, trickster. And he said, Thy name shall no, be, no more, that they, thy name shall be called no more Jacob or trickster, but Israel, prince. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. You see, Jacob wrestled all night for what? To save his life? He was very rich now. He had what the world would say, many blessings. Many blessings, physical possessions. But he understood Still something was missing. Why in the world was he, was he saying, I won't let you go until you bless me. I won't let you go. He already had all these blessings. He understood. He understood that it's not all wrapped up in what you get in this world. Without living your life without God's blessing is an empty life. Is an empty life. And... He knew it took per perseverance. Effective prayer takes perseverance. Effective prayer takes perseverance. Jacob wrestled all night because he wanted God's blessing. He wanted God to touch his life. He wanted God to, 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 to be in his life. It wasn't a, a matter of having all these possessions. He wanted God. Is it not strange that in spite of our conviction of its privilege and necessity, we are all plagued with a subtle aversion to praying? We do not naturally delight in drawing near to God. We pay lip service to its value and potency, and yet so often fail to pray. When I go to pray, someone, a great Christian once said, I find in my heart, my, I find that my heart is loath to go to God. And when I am with him in prayer, it is... De desirous to leave. It is here that self-discipline comes in. When, when you feel the most indisposed to pray, then go pray. But strive to pray. Here's an area in which we can avail ourselves of the, uh, ourselves of the Spirit's promise, promised assistance in our weakness. Intercessory prayer will take time, but could hours be more strategically spent? Time is a commodity of which there seems to be a universal and chronic shortage. 
Lack of time is much overworked. It is, la- lack of time is a much overworked excuse for neglect of duty. And yet, strangely enough, even in the midst of an exacting routine, we, will, we always contrive to find time for all we urgently want to do. In reality, the fundamental problem lies not in the time factor, but in the realm of will and desire. We each have all the time there is, and we each choose our own priorities. We automatically place first that which we deem most important. If prayer is meager, it is because we consider it supplemental, not fundamental. To our Lord, it was not a reluctant addendum, but a fundamental necessity. The time we spend in prayer will depend on the way in which we allocate our priorities. If we share Christ's view of the indispensability of prayer, we will somehow make time for it. God wants to show his power through us. But we have to understand that effective, there's some things that have to be done to, have, to, to, to pray effective, effectively. What does the, 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 the apostle say? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And he said that in talking to, to the prophet Elijah, how he prayed that there would be no rain and there wasn't any rain. You see, he had... God's ear, the prophet did. And when he said, there'll be no rain, God said, okay, I'm not going to let it rain. And then when he said, I'm going to let it rain, then he let it rain because he was praying effectively. And that's what we as Christians, of of all things that our nation needs at this point in time, is we need effectual prayers. We need Christians, men and women of God, who can go to God in prayer and who can pray for these areas and for our country that that God would pour out a spirit of revival, that God would pour out his peace, that God would fill the needy hearts of these, these, these people doing these awful things and answer the needs of our heart. Amen? That's what we can do. Each one of us, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be, you don't have to be a pastor to do this. You don't, have, you don't have to be a bus captain to do this. You don't have to be a Sunday school teacher to do this. All you have to have, all you have, to have is, a, is a will and desire. I mean, even if you don't have two knees that you can kneel on, you can still pray. Amen. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? So it's, it's something that all of us can do. It's something all of us can do. Amen. Let's, we'll finish the, the, uh, this Bible study this, ne- this next week. Let's go ahead and pray, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, wrap up the service. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for a chance to come to church. I pray, Lord, that you please. I pray, Lord, that you please help us, Lord, as, as Christians. Help us, Lord, to understand this need that we have. To be prayers. To get on the battlefield. To not just be comfortable with our Christian lives here, with our comfortable building. Lord, you want revival to happen all over the world. I love what that, that, that preacher said. How that w- many of us American Christians are guilty of praying for revival for America. But how many times have we prayed for revival in other countries? And we're so self-centered. We only pray for our country which is good, but we haven't even thought about the other countries. And there's, there's countless amount of people that are being oppressed all over the world. We think slavery's dead. It's, it's not in the news, but it's still going on. And Lord, do we pray for those people? Do we pray for those chains to be broken? For the misery to stop? Lord, I'm convicted by even those questions. I pray, Lord, that you please help us, Lord, as Christians to realize that we have a position of power when we get on our knees. It's not a position of weakness. It's a position of power. And help us, Lord, to use that to climb up on that battlefield in the spirit realm and to do battle and to talk to you and to, 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 to move you. Lord, you want to show yourself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are perfect towards you. I pray, Lord, that you please challenge our hearts. Challenge our hearts. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, we'll let Miss Melissa play a hymn of invitation. We're going to take a few minutes and pray, and then I'll, we'll come back. I'll come back and we'll sing a closing hymn. Miss Melissa?
Let's grab our hymn books and go to number three. Number three, Jesus paid it all. We'll sing the first and last verse as our closing hymn. Number three, Jesus paid it all. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, Jesus died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe, sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Let's all stand and we'll be dismissed in prayer this evening. Thank you so much, Lord, uh, everyone, for being here this evening. And thank you so much uh, for your faithfulness. And uh, be in prayer for the Merklingers. They are in Nevada, from what I hear, and having a blast over there, enjoying their time. So pray for traveling mercies. Pray for Brother Luke. Uh, he'll be uh, recuperated quickly. Uh, right, Miss Lori? Yeah. That way, that way he can do some stuff around the house, right? No, I'm, I'm kidding. No. Amen. Well, we, we hope that he recuperates very quickly. So, amen. All right, let's bow for prayer and uh, we'll be dismissed. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for a chance to come to church. Lord, I pray that you please encourage our hearts, lift our spirits. I pray, Lord, that you please uh, help us, Lord, in this area of prayer to be challenged, Lord. Make us hungry. Make us thirsty, Lord. Make us desirous to, to have power with you. Lord, so that we can have power with men, so that the, the, the lost can hear the message of salvation, so the, our world can be changed. Lord, all it, starts, all it needs to start is just one voice to, to take a stand, to make a choice. I pray, Lord, that you please help us, Lord, to be challenged. Help us, Lord, as, as your children to be disciplined and, and spend time with you and not let the distractions of this world or the flesh or the devil win the battle in our in the spiritual realm in our lives lord i pray you please bless our folks bless them as they go to work and bring us back safely on sunday lord i pray this in jesus name amen amen god bless you have a good day